when, when people are just prepared to go all out for what matters. I mean, some of the things that she told me, like puppies dying in her arms and everything. We have John Paul Rice there. Thank you so much for joining us. Hey, it's a pleasure to be on with you all. Thank oh. you, guys. You're the for, most requested uh, guest of the week. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's a real honor. Um, listen, I, I just want to thank uh, the thousands of people, millions of people at this point, that um, the outpouring of their care and their love, uh, not only for our protection, but really for the victims and it's, it's the outpouring of love for, for humanity that we're in this time. It's much bigger than human trafficking. Human trafficking is a symptom yeah. of a much bigger problem. Right. And this is why when I did that message, um, when I did that video, I just, I, it just flowed out of me. I didn't, I didn't plan it that, was clear. that way. It just came out. And yeah. I had known about this for a very long time, um, you know, studying it, learning about it, but really it was the election of Donald Trump that blew a hole through reality uh, for me. And uh, this is a guy, I mean, tell people all the time, this is not a Republican or Democrat issue. It's not a right, left issue, conservative, liberal, whatever you want to identify yourself as. This is a human being issue. This is about the most vulnerable and defenseless of our species being preyed upon by very sick people who have dark ties to a Luciferian cabal and a Satanist cabal. And this is bigger than pedophilia. So their illusion in this time is starting to fall. They're losing control. That's why you're seeing the censorship. That's why you're seeing the shutdown of all of these different things that we've, we've enjoyed for so very long. Right. But our love for our kids is more powerful than all the darkness that has ever been perpetuated upon us. And I just wanted to get out there and say what I felt and do what I could to contribute to this, to this time because it's moved me in such a way that it's changed me. Not changed me about the horrors of the world, but changed me about the beauty and the love that is possible when we heal ourselves. And this child abuse issue is the issue of our time because truly, if we don't look ourselves in the mirror and use all of the knowledge that we have, what we're going to see happen is we're going to, quote, eradicate a group of people in the name of righteousness, in the name of morality, and we are going to find ourselves swinging back and becoming as violent and as horrifying as they are in a different expression because violence and destruction is not the answer. Love and forgiveness, which in, this, in the face of this horror, if we cannot stand up together for each other, for our families, for our children, for our friends, for our strangers who are suffering, in the face of this darkness, we are going to be extinguished. John Paul, let me give some context to what you're saying so that people can realize how vital it actually is for the for the people who may not have seen john paul's video which will probably be about five of the people who are watching this currently i would imagine most people have seen your videos watching us yeah and what you it, it was i thought it was very deep and very profound and what i've done in the meantime i also wanted to look back at your work so john paul is a hollywood producer and has been for you've been in hollywood for 20 years and that's why what you're saying has so much power to it because you are talking as somebody who's sort of been there seen it and done it you obviously you have you've been involved in re, um, producing a series of films Juno as one example I know you were also involved in the Hunger Games I believe well um, I want to I want to clarify that because on. because I you know I, I know everybody when they first get information they they put it through their own filter I I said in that video because I wanted to make sure I've, other people have raised this point I worked for the producers of Juno, The Grudge, Harold right. and Kumar, The Hunger Games, right. for which I had the fortune of being able to be in the industry close up around a lot of people and have access to studios, agents, all of that. So I got to know all of these people very closely and I was a contributing part of that. But I just want to be clear, I didn't produce cool. those movies. Absolutely cool. Yeah, no, but I produced my own. I produced six on my own with my own company after that. So 
I just wanted to clarify that, I, and I appreciate you giving me that opportunity to do Not so. Not at all. Uh, we need uh, accuracy is so vital. When yeah. I make a mistake, I am more than happy to make that correction because yeah. we want to move forward in truth. We've had enough That's of exactly everybody. That's exactly right. We've had enough bullshit. <laughs> Absolutely. There's no ego here. So apps, yeah. I'm glad you've cleared that. That's great. So, yeah. but yeah. what's interesting, and obviously one of the reasons for your recent video was the issue of Amazon and the the yes. movie that you had made, a child's voice being re effectively is it removed from the platform or just made invisible on the platform what are that's they a, yes so so the film itself has been unpublished that's what amazon calls it technically right. and if you were to go and search for it here in the united states because i don't have vpn to go all over the world see where you know what what searches are available but in the united states if you were to go on amazon.com today and put in a child's voice you would not be able to find it you wouldn't be able to find the reference page. You wouldn't be able to find the trailer. You wouldn't be able to read the reviews or the description. If you were even go to the director or any one of our other films, we have six films on there. If, we were to, if you were to go to any one of those other films and search by keywords like the director, Edgar Bravo, or John Paul Rice, the producer, Child's Voice wouldn't even show up in any of the searches under our names. The only way that you could see the link of, of its existence is through our website at norestrictionsent.com. It's still there, but it's not searchable. And the video is not playable on Prime, rental, or download. And they did all of this in the US, UK, and several other countries, up to 70 other countries worldwide in English-speaking languages, as well as Spanish. They took it all down as, as the Wayfair scandal or the Wayfair story. I'm just going to put it out there as a story. The consciousness of people was pay attention to this human trafficking issue. Then... Maxwell comes along and in between that, they pull it off their platform. They just stopped it. And this is not uh, exclusive to us. I've had two other movies taken down since, one on prostitution, another on child abuse. Gosh. What they are doing is they're going through and erasing history or any reference points that point to a larger problem in society for which all extend, like our movie, into a place where we're talking about these these, this uh, elite group of people, this network that buys and trades children, okay? And we pointed out that and we included the satanic element to it, which was yes. the sacrifice. We did it a very, I, I would call it is the most delicate and tasteful way that I could. And we put in this story, a story about love and redemption. So it had, it had the dark element, but in the face of that darkness, this beautiful story between this boy and this girl who are brought together by a child spirit. It's a supernatural story, but it has all truthful disclosures. And we made this movie so that people who are not like you and I, who haven't researched it, could see it and begin their own discovery for themselves as to what they want to see and research on their own. I want to say this though, this is happening to multiple filmmakers on films where they're coming out a child abduction and they find out that they're a Christian or a conservative, they're striking Facebook pages left and right, not even discussion groups, promoting these movies. They're taking them out of the searches, out of the algorithms, taking them out of the top placement on these other sites. So it's, it's not just us, they're coming for everyone that is talking about this talking Everybody. about child trafficking which is yes. very much because what you discovered was this sort of you you you, you found once you started to dig deep you found this global scenario didn't yes. you yes yes and it and it and it i saw it in the united states there was an east coast trafficking ring this was what i was trying to do in that video was to point to open source information for people to be able to learn for themselves you don't have to follow me you don't have to believe what i say i'm just saying do your own work to know for yourself as far as you wish to go so that you don't have to believe what I say or what you say or what Sean says or what this person says. Go look at Anake Lucas' testimony and say, is she lying? Is Ronald Bernard lying? Is Jay Parker, an SRA survivor, lying? Is Christy Allen lying? Or all of these, and, and on and on it goes. I mean, at a certain point you go, well, what is true and what's not true? And then I'm standing back here and I'm looking at it and going, you're a major media corporation, Hollywood, of six. And you control all of what we see, all of what we read, 
our social media with big tech, our Complicit. gaming industry, all of it. And you have a growing customer base who is raising concerns, legitimate concerns based on open source information about Epstein having a pipeline right into Hollywood through Harvey Weinstein. And I'm sitting here going, as a business, you would just say, hey, we're going to get to the bottom of this. We're going to investigate it. We're not going to stop until every stone has been turned over and we're going to look at it so we can debunk this and put it to bed. Or if we find anybody who's been doing this, we're going to turn them over to law enforcement. We're going to have total transparency and these people are going to go to jail and they're never going to work in this industry ever again. There is radio silence on any of this. The Wayfair group put out a statement that said, well, our pricing was accurate for these items. They're not even launching an investigation to get to the bottom of how that even happened to begin with to calm down their customer base. What the hell is going on? I mean, that's, that's all I'm asking. I'm just pointing at the fact that there's silence from people in Hollywood who always use their platform to tell you what you should be thinking, what you should be focused on, what's the important issue of the day. And these are some of the people who are parents and they're not even talking about child sex trafficking. I know for a fact from my own friends, they can't say a word about Epstein or Maxwell or they'll be blacklisted. That's how bad it is. Wow, I admire your passion. Let me just say a few things here then. You mentioned Annika Lucas. We interviewed her recently. Um, that one's on the channel if people want to check that out. And also, my question for you then, what experiences from your life led you to have this passion to go down this dark road? Yeah. And how did you reach these conclusions about child sex trafficking? That's a very good question. Um, well, in some of my testimony that I've given in interviews, um, the child sex trafficking issue for which I was not as aware of, obviously, in, over the last three years have become more into understanding the depth and the depravity of it all. Um, it forced me to confront my own abuse. It forced me to confront my own childhood for which I, I don't know how to describe it, but in, in, in the process of this journey, as I kind of indicated through art, we need truthful art. Art is where you pursue a belief going in maybe, and you uncover more meaning from it. And then you, and then you share what you learned, your, your, your journey inward, as well as the external is a reflection of yourself. And so um, I had known about, you know, my childhood for a long time. I mean, I, it's obvious I had parents who were alcoholics. They were very damaged people. Um, I, I know from my own observation, I mean, I was seven years old. I was in a mental hospital. I, you, you say that and you're just like, what? And it's yeah. like, it was a hospital. But you didn't know you were in a mental hospital. And because you were suicidal at seven, I wanted to die. Yeah. And it was like, and then I meet a girl there who's like 12 years old. who's a prostitute, 12 years old. She's been on the streets since she was 10 and a half years old. She has a mom and a dad. And this other girl over here is 13. She's a prostitute. It's like, what the hell is going on? I mean, you don't know this. You're seven, eight years old. You can't. So it was that, it was that whole journey and my time in Hollywood. And so what happened was this, Sean. I confronted those darker truths. I cried a ton out. I had the Alice Miller books you know, the knowledge. I had a friend who really cared for me, gave me truthful information. And then I decided that, no, I'm going to confront this and I'm going to change my life because I don't like the way I'm living. That was the reason for the understanding of all of this was understanding myself better than anybody else could. And when I looked back on those 19 years living in LA and I saw all of that. I had, there was a girl I knew. I'll just give you one example. There was a girl I knew, beautiful 22 year old girl, model type, who talked to me about a fantasy she had about going to Las Vegas with a girlfriend, hiring a stripper or a prostitute and killing her and taking her out and burying her body in the desert. And the thrill was because nobody would care. Mm. Nobody cares about her. And 
I, you just think about it. He's like, step back. It's like, that's f- terrifying. But like, how does somebody come to that conclusion at such a young age when you have everything available to you? And so the Satanism and the Luciferian and the, it, there's many, many levels to this whole thing. But it just, it just showed me, like when I started looking behind that curtain in, and, and this last year in LA, the last year that I spent there, I, it just started jumping out at me everywhere. And I started looking back at my life and I saw it every step of the way. Every step of the way. I'm not talking about like prostitution and, you know, 18 and above. I'm saying I didn't know what I was seeing. And, you know, Mike, uh, who did Out of Shadows, said the same thing. We just, we just, you don't know how to process it because you don't have a reference to it. And yet it's right there staring in front of you. And yet it's hidden too. It's, it's yeah. the weirdest thing. It's yeah. like, it's always been there, but you don't see it. Yeah. And then this, this whole time that I've been in for myself and my own personal development, it just, you know what it did? It showed me what is true about all of us. In, in the final analysis about human beings, and you either are going to believe that human beings have a proclivity or, or an inclination to be evil, and I look at those beautiful babies, and I looked at this one little girl that came into my life, thank God, for the last four years. It was almost like I was reminded of what a child is in myself, that beauty, that joy, that play that we do so effortlessly with kids, mm-hmm. and yet we're supposed to live like that. Yeah. We're supposed to live that way. That's how life is supposed to be. That's how you're born as. And yet life is difficult enough. There's so much suffering. We don't need this added level of crap, you know, consuming and eating us away. And then we, and, and creating this divide and conquer system that essentially leads to our own destruction and cynicism that is going to come forward and no belief in humanity anymore. And I'm not talking about having a divine power involved or not. I'm just saying at the base level, you either believe that human beings can just become evil because of money out of nowhere and that it's random or there's a causation with this child abuse system and our child abuse that we do to our own children in the privacy of our homes. And if we don't start talking about this, We're going to return back here again when there are weapons of destruction greater than nuclear weapons today. We are rolling the dice on our futures if we don't start to have this inward turn and this healing. And so when I was looking at everything and seeing one side of the equation, most of whom believe that they're right, by the way, they they will tell you, you you don't understand what the real world is like. That's, that's always their, you know, stated excuse. But the truth of the matter is, is in their world, prostitution is nothing. No. And it's interesting you talk about that evolution because I, I can see it in you. I've, I watched your courage videos as, as perfect example. You're like a different person there. And it's just, yeah. it's almost like, I mean, you've, you've brightened up. You've actually, you're lighter. You're a lighter soul now. Yes. And, and I suspect that's because you're reaching a, a sort of almost like a completeness that you may never have experienced before. No. You know? and, and you are, you're visibly changed over the last year. I mean, visibly changed. And it's the, the lightness of your being is obvious. It really is. And that often happens when we finally get in touch with the path that we're supposed to be on. You know, yeah. that often happens and we start to open up. And some of the things, that I, one of the things, when I, when I watched your video, I immediately thought of Isaac Cappy. Do you remember Isaac mm-hmm. Cappy? Yeah. I immediately thought of Isaac Cappy. I said, please don't let the same fate befall this mm-hmm. man that mm-hmm. fell Isaac Cappy. Do you have any opinion on, on Isaac Cappy and what may or may not have happened to him? Um, no, I mean, I, you know, when, when it was found that he was, he was murdered or killed or, or died or committed suicide, I, I mean, I think his intentions to, to try to help were there. Um, I didn't know him personally. I didn't even reach out to him, really. I, I just kind of like, I was doing my own thing at the time. I think that what I look at in the bigger picture of everything, I'm, I'm not asking for anybody to do anything other than what they wish to do. But if you look back in time and you look back in history, there have always been people who have been 
ahead of things who, whether they knew or not, they were committing an act of sacrifice, self-sacrifice to help. And I think that he may have underestimated certain things. Uh, I certainly do not. I know that, um, you know, I'm not drawing attention to myself this way. I've had thousands of messages from around the world, uh, people praying for me, yeah. comments and videos, praying for me, praying for my protection. Uh, I, there is a spiritual aspect to this, as you can imagine. But um, what I say to people is this, like, if you walk in fear, you do not have, you can't walk in love or faith. Mm. And um, it's not a religious belief, but it's, it's understanding that, yes, you could die and they could kill you and they could do all sorts of things, but it's our courage. The love we have inside of ourselves is what gives courage. Courage is not a, an external thing of virtue that you go and you just pull it into yourself. It comes from within. And I look at it this way. This is the, the whole thing, Sonia. When parents don't put their children first, when parents will not die for their children, you have an uphill climb in life. Right. And, and what I, I'm not trying to, I, I, I know the risk, but I don't have fear. And even if fear comes in a little bit or doubt, I align myself with the creator of heaven and earth because I know what we are. At least it's not a belief. I know what these people on this side of the equation think of us and wh why they do what they do. They kill children to destroy God's creation. That is, why, that is their belief, and that's the entity that they call upon in their bodies to be able to feed off of all of this horrific energy that they create. And if I'm going to do my part in this time, where I'm at, whatever people want to think, I'm motivated because I want to see a beautiful world emerge in, from this darkness. I truly do. And I don't think we get there by killing our way out of it or destroying our way through it. I want to promote the good. I want people to take not my lead, but their own and start telling the stories on live streams, in text messages, in phone conversations to that person, that one person that you can identify in your life who changed your life, who gave of themselves that sacrifice because they could see their suffering, their suffering and your suffering was the same. And they, and they had the capacity to see that and go, not another one. Not like me. I had a guy in that hospital, his name was Denny, who came from a bad background, I, I could tell you. But that man saw something in me, gave of his time, and it helped heal him too. His own child an extension of himself was right in front of him. That young boy who didn't have a father who loved him could, could for a moment. And he did. And even though I knew him for only a couple of months while I was there, that and our relationship ended after I was out of the hospital, that man changed my life for the better forever. We want to reverse the flow of this fear. Start projecting love, light the world up, Start telling your story, your lived experience, and, and call the people that you love that matter and let them hear from you. This is how we can begin this, this process. And I, I just think the more we put light into the world, the darkness has less place to hide. Yes. It really I absolutely does. Agree. Do you feel you're personally healing through this? Does this feel that it's having a, a healing effect on you? In the bigger picture, yes, I do. Um, I think it's just an evolution that I've, a path that I've been on, and I don't know where it's going to take me. And I'm just following it. I'm flowing with that 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 current where we're at right now. Right. Um, I think there are going to be many, 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 and I'm not just talking about the industry. I'm talking about everywhere. The more truth starts to rise, the times will change. Mm -hmm. All of our lies, all of our contradictions within ourselves, are the things that hold us there. It, it, it's allowing us to control ourselves. And if on the outside, you just see fake news, right? Fake news, lies, manipulation, deceit, um, truthful information begins to flow in. You change the time. You yeah. really change the reality. And yeah. if you do that internally rather than externally, it can begin to change you. So the, the stories and the messages and those women that have been telling me, I was looking for a reason to live. I'm 53 years old, listening to your video, 
it rejuvenated me. I'm going to do the EFT. I'm going to look into these things. I thank you. I can't thank you enough. I can't express in words enough. A woman who has no followers says, I'm going to keep every day telling the world about your message with no followers. And it's just like, that's, that's so you've empowered beautiful. people. You've, you've, given, the, you've given people courage. I mean, that's, that's the amazing thing about it. And I think that things are changing because you only have to look now for example. I think people are picking up on cues that they weren't before. For example, the sexualization of children. You know, one of the things that, that came to light this week was about these lol dolls, for example, you dunk them in water and they're suddenly revealed to have stockings and various things. I was sent a picture of a Disney toy from Frozen. The top of it was a penis and the idea was for children to put their mouth on it and and um blow bubbles through it and the top of it was a penis and i contacted yeah, I disney that. yeah and i said can you confirm this is your product they wouldn't confirm it was their product because they realized that they were caught in the headlights but people yes. are picking up on this very quickly and obviously what we have for example is the save the children protest so they going on in hollywood yes there there's another one um i think it's coming up on the 22nd there's going to be another one um I have a friend who's uh, not involved in the organization, but in the promotion of it. And I, I think that's going to continue to be amplified, especially among, I cannot tell you how many actors and industry people have told me they've seen the video and it has started to change them. Right. They've started, they've started to look at things more carefully in their own investigation. Um, but it was already there. It's just, you, sometimes you just need an event or some kind of, a message that comes out as a catalyst to connect everything and break through all the bullshit and allow people to see through that illusion. Um, I'm not here to destroy Hollywood. Hollywood's going to destroy itself. It Absolutely. already has. Yeah. And, I, and I, I'm not, I, all I'm trying to do is to, 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 to lead people out of the BS and say, look, over here, there's food and water and there's plenty for everybody. You don't have to stay under the control of these people because they will do everything by belief or by design. They will do everything to consolidate power and suck as much money and power out of the system as possible. Independent film in Hollywood is dead. It is dead. Right. And they, are, they, uh, they want propaganda. They want agendas. They are tripling and doubling down. They're never going to change until collapse. And I just, I just want to do my part to advance us so that we can get to a human story, the real human story, the one that we have yet to live, that we can create the world we want to live in. And we can do that very easily by just walking away from these people. You don't even have to fight them. Yeah. You know, Buckminster Fuller said, if you want, I forgot the direct quote, but he said, if you want to change the world, don't destroy the existing system, build a new system away from it mm. that makes the old system obsolete. Mm because they want to pull you into a destructive force. That is their whole design. It's like, I mean, I, I just, on a microcosm, Black Lives Matter and Tifa, this is not unification. No. This is contention, and this is weaponizing people's minds with morality so that one side has to win. It's tribalism in its no. fundamental level, and it's gonna create contention, and it's gonna lead to violence on the extremes, on both sides of the equation, that's what it's designed to do. And they get, to, while that distraction is going on, they get to advance their agenda and their, and their power. If you pull away from all of this and look at your neighbors and look at your own observable reality and go, does anybody wanna live this way? Does anybody wanna live in a world like this? Nobody does from whatever side of the equation you, you're on. So what we have to do, it's true. Your ideas, your creativity are greater than anything these yeah. other people can ever come up with. Truly. Yeah. And you're like, if people are like, well, 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 where do I start? You're doing it right now. You're doing it right now. It's you have to find your voice, your instrument of the emanation of God that you are. Your voice, your instrument, play that instrument in the symphony of the world. And it doesn't matter whether you have an audience of no one or an audience of millions. Yeah. All of it accumulates and rises this consciousness up higher to where we come out of this illusion and we can start creating things. We can create our own space. We can create our own businesses. We can create our own industries. Yeah. It's, it's not magical thinking. No. I mean, I truly, I, I, I'm talking about as someone who was 
heavily involved in activism on, on a level of the world is bad, it's terrible, it's horrible, it's, it's never going to change, it's, it's in a hopeless cause. It's so a very in- left thinking, very democratic yes, thinking. Very much, and, right. and, and designed this way so that I attack the structure. Yes. I'm eating my own house down. I'm yeah. burning my own house down and not looking at the inhabitants of that structure and how either we replace them if it's possible, or we build in a new direction away from them. We build out of the medical industrial complex away from the pharmaceutical industry. We may have to break the law in order to do holistics, but if a majority of people begin to do that, it's the hundredth monkey. It's the hundredth monkey story about the monkeys who were on that island when in the Pacific, when they bombed the crap out of it with nuclear bombs and they went in there to observe these monkeys to see what life forms were still living. And what happened was, and there's two different versions of the stories. One's a coconut sweet potato. I'm going to use a coconut. They were eating coconut and the younger monkeys started washing that coconut with water to get the sand off of it. The older monkeys didn't join in right away, but as more monkeys started to join in, by the time it got to the hundredth monkey, all the monkeys were doing the same thing. Mm -hmm. And the phenomena behind this was not just the, the imitation, but they went to the other islands that were not connected to this group of monkeys and all the other monkeys started doing the same thing. There's a book that was written in the 70s. I don't have the author in front of me. He studied the last 1500 years of human civilization and he showed before the internet, before the phones, before the telegraph, before all of this invention that connected the world in isolated places among art, history, science, innovation, technology, however you want to quantify it, the expression of humanity was all coming through within a five to 10 year period. How is that possible when people aren't connected? There's something else going on. Absolutely, there is. Sean, I'm sure that we've got some viewers who, who have questions for, for John Paul here. I've got a ton of questions oh, for I him. I thought so. I've told, I've told Brand New Tube that I'll go overtime on this because I got um, ditched off my internet earlier and I missed about 15 minutes. We are at nine, but if I'm willing to keep going. Are you, are you uh, in or out, Sonia? Are you willing to keep going or do you want to? I think we should go to about quarter past at the latest, really, because we're, we're asking John yeah. Paul to, to step really out of what we'd agreed with him. But we'd appreciate if you, do you have time, do you have time John Paul. I'm, I have time great. and I'll be happy to, uh, be to wherever this conversation you want Thank to go you. that okay. I can add to it. OK, going back then to your personal story, as a kid, who made that decision to put you in the mental hospital and what was it based on? Well, so I, I started having um, suicidal, you know, feelings of wanting to die and depression. And I had, um, I remember this years later, I had actually been in the YMCA in an after school care program. And I had gotten so mad. I don't remember what it was, but I had gotten so mad. I had taken a desk, a wooden and metal desk at a, as a seven, eight year old kid. And I lifted it up and threw it across the room. Um, My parents had divorced. My father was an alcoholic, so was my mother. Um, And, you know, so the surface level issues were, well, he had just moved to a new, we had moved away from home. The parents had just separated. So from that lens plus what I was expressing, my mother had decided that I needed to see a therapist. And that individual, um, I confided in them how I was feeling. Uh, And I guess the recommendation was if I wanted to go in, um, they were recommending it. So I, I, I went with it. Um, They, my mom asked me if I wanted to go on medications. I said, no, she respected that at eight years old, which was pretty amazing. Um, I don't know if I'd have that luxury today. Uh, but it was a consensus of the, the therapist, my mother and me, um, to kind of take a break. And it wasn't, it wasn't like, you know, you say mental hospital, like it was like an insane asylum. No, it was a a floor on the wing of a hospital, Mm -hmm. um, with, you know, patient rooms, but there was a common area. Kids all played. They had uh, a 
they did have a padded room if if you got kind of out of hand you needed to go and so you wouldn't hurt yourself you know they had a padded room there um but that was really if you had an explosion of anger um that kind of thing and so you know i'm glad i did i really i mean I, you know looking mm-hmm. back on it i i think that i needed to get away from my mom uh i needed to get out of school I needed a place where I could feel safe and, and, and somewhat loved or cared for. And I did find that in, in little ways there. I also sound, you know, a lot of people that were just, it's not a perfect world guys. Um, there's people that go into these things for different reasons, different motivations, like anything there, there are good doctors, there are bad doctors, both of them earn the degree, you know? Um, but overall I attached myself to people who, cared for me and loved me. And that's why I was saying that guy, Denny, um, was, was the guy that I, I mean, he, he allowed that outlet for me to, to, to rough and tumble, to have that man, male figure to talk to. And so, um, but that, that was the, um, that was the reason that I went in there. That took time though, to form those relationships, those positive relationships. What was your first date in there like? And even though you were suffering abuse, did you have a surge of separation anxiety? Yeah, well, see, the, here's the thing. I didn't know I was abused. Uh, most children, um, right. Right. you know, this is the thing about Alice Miller. I point to the, the 12, point, the 12 uh, points that she puts out on the roots of violence. I, I highly recommend people go and read that off of her website and study it and commit it to memory because, or reference it every single time you see something happen in the world because it's all there. Children, when they're hurt by their parents, cannot conceive of their mother and father hurting them. So they internalize that and blame themselves as well as banish that knowledge. It'll be completely forgotten. So until later in life where I had other therapies that I did, sense memory recall, um, all I knew was that the first day I walked in there, I was moving my toys in there, the ones that they would allow. Couldn't have a belt, obviously. And I had clothes in a cubby. And this was going to be where I was going to sleep and eat and go to school for the next two, three months or however long. And um, obviously I had anxiety um, because, you know, my mom's going to come and visit me, but she's not going to be there. But at the same time, I had enough of a contentious relationship with her that it was kind of a relief in some ways. That's terrible to say, but um, she had a lot of mental problems and emotional problems uh, from her childhood as well. This is generational. This is how uh, this is not like this is not like, uh, you know, when you say, well, my child's acting out bad. It's like, no, your child is acting as a result of the consequent, the, the totality of everything that is that is programmable in their brain, those first seven years of their brain developing is in an alpha, excuse me, it's in a delta and theta brainwave state, which is 100% programmable. And it's like, it's like what Bruce Lipton describes it as. He said, it's like a computer program. You just turn it on and it, it just goes and you just load programs on there. And in your subconscious mind, this is the scary part. Subconscious mind, one of the rules that govern the subconscious mind is it doesn't make decisions. And it doesn't decide between what's real and what's imagined. It treats both of those equally. You can imagine what mental health is really all about when you get right down to it. Mm. So um, my, my whole, my whole, you know, there was a journey. I mean, it went through my teenage years. It went in through my young man years dating in Hollywood. I mean, I found different versions of my mom in women. That's not their fault. They were looking for love just like I was. Mm -hmm. And I, and I point people to extremes because it's really important to understand if you were to take the Gianni Versace story, an American crime, I think it's American crime story Mm -hmm. on Netflix, Gianni Versace, the murder of Gianni Versace. The true story that's in there is the Andrew Cunanan story. And I, it is one of the most brilliant pieces of art I've ever seen come out of Hollywood. I don't know if it's the writers doing it or what, because the Gianni Versace one is not the important. I mean, it's why they got the life rights and all that, but it's the story of Andrew Cunan and how he murdered five men. Right. And what he was seeking, and you will find at the very end of that story is so profound and, and revel. 
it's, 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 a, it's a profound statement because it shows you his childhood and where he came from, which is not an excuse. But what I'm saying is we don't, we don't look at the causation of why someone would murder. He wanted to be loved by a man who was a re- representation of his father whom abused that boy so bad that when everything was falling apart and the feds were after him, he turned to his father to help him. And his father used him again. And it just shows how we were so dependent on them, even, even with the truth in front of our face. And if we're not willing to confront that truth, we're going to be living a life in denial, which is going to be deny, not denying the existence of the trauma, but the denial of ourselves and our own life and our own purpose, because we'll be living in fear. That trauma, it, it's, that trauma is as real, I mean, in terms of its effect, is as real today as it was back then. And the only, the only difference, what Sean, you know, you're asking about what that was all like, I could never imagine another reality than the one I knew. Right. I really couldn't. Exactly. I couldn't see another world because this is the world I knew. As you were adapting to the hospital, how easy was it for you to trust people? Was it, did you have trust issues? You know, um, I did. I've always had trust issues. Um, but at the same time, I would open myself up to predators. Um, because I wanted to be loved and I was used as a child. So my, my um, wanting to be loved overcame not looking at reality. And so uh, I was desperate. I mean, I was truly desperate for anybody to pay attention and, and love me. And it turned a lot of people off. Sociopaths would come around a little bit, but they'd get bored very quickly because I wasn't, I wasn't enough for them. You'd be a and, magnet, though, wouldn't you, for narcissists and, and any of those types, NPD people? At that time, yeah, because I was, I was listening to anybody that would pay attention to me. Yeah. Yeah. You mentioned that you met child prostitutes. You were seven. I, didn't, I couldn't comprehend what a prostitute was at that age. How did right. you start comprehending the horror of what they'd been through. Can I just say that I do object to the idea that we call children prostitutes because yeah. there is a, because there's a problem. I have a problem with that. These are abused children. Yes. Yes. And they're prost- not, they're not, yeah. they're not professional. Exactly. Conscious it's, of what they're doing. Right. right? Yeah. So that, that's a good, that's a good note to, to make because when we talk about it, and I would even say on a level where you're an adult, even though you have more of a, of a free will choice, they really don't know what, Oh, the level they're of doing, abuse. They're doing what they know, and that's not their fault. I mean, they have a responsibility, of course, but, but it's like this. I, I tell people, it's like, look, if you knew what you were doing and where you were headed and the danger you were in, you have to really be a very cynical person to believe that somebody would willfully want to cause harm to themselves and damage themselves as they were damaged as children. Yeah. I mean, that's really what we're talking about is the replay of trauma again yeah, yeah. and, and never, and not being able to connect with another human being or love another human being, um, even though they may say it and they want it. So these children you were asking about, Sean, um, the concept of that, no, I didn't understand it. I knew that they had sex and sexual relations. Um, and then I saw their parents so it was like, it was very, it was, and, and the blame was placed on the child. The child was the problem, not the parents. You know, it wasn't the sexual abuse that was going on in the home that created that daughter who went out and was looking for men, you know, and s- selling their body to have time with a man for, at 10. I mean, 11 years old, this is the most wicked thing mm. that you could ever imagine mm. a child in the, mm. in mm. the beginning of their, their expression of sexuality at puberty. Mm. Yeah, and of course it's not sex, it's rape, isn't it? It can't possibly be sex because they can't consent to it. No, and, and, and the other side of it too is that, you know, when we talk about men who go after young kids, and I'm, again, I'm not giving a pass to this. This is about solving the root cause of the problem. Right. When I mentioned in that video, what creates a pedophile? So you have, you know, you talk about people's like, well, wait a minute, I was sexually abused. I'm not a pedophile. Of course not. Because what happens to a pedophile 
is such an extreme expression of sexual abuse. That means that every adult in that child's life was abusing them and was not safe. That's why they identify with the child, the younger part of themselves that's vulnerable. It, it's mixed with violence, of course, but if you sit people down, I'm not, I'm not talking about satanic killing, child killing people. I'm talking about the ones that are identifying with that child. They are connecting through their own trauma to that kid. And it's, this is why they're, they're, they're drawn to him because they're the vulnerable an innocent child that they once were, and they're the only thing that's safe. And they think, they think, the ones, I'm not talking about the rape, and I'm not talking about the violence, but they think that they're helping that kid. They really, they want, they, I've, I've listened to them talk, and I, I, I mean, it's just jaw drop. It's like, what, how do you come to that conclusion that you're an adult and you're inappropriately touching these little kids and you think you're helping them? I mean, it, it's it, because in their mind, in their traumatized mind that's what they're believing hmm. and for these men that are doing this you got to ask yourself why is it i mean you have money you have you have money and you can do anything you want why just not go with 18 and above there's there's i mean if if that's what you want there's 18 and above even though that's not a good situation for anybody to get to that point where you're process, you know you're you're working and paying for sex on either side of the equation, it's like, why can't you do that? Why do you feel compelled to go after a little one? And, and, and the root cause of that issue is that there is child abuse in both of those. That equation is child abuse on both sides of the mm. equation. Mm. And um, so for this girl, she was so, I mean, I just want to tell you, like, she was a sweetheart. She was, she dreamed. She had... She, she painted. It's just a human being in flesh and blood mm -hmm. and trying to make sense of her life at 12 when, I mean, the stuff that she saw and you didn't have to even talk about it. It was worn on her face. She was already yeah. an old woman at 12. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. they, the abused children are. I mean, they, they're literally like, they carry decades on their shoulders way before, uh, before they should. But how are we, because obviously your essential message is about people coming together, unifying, coming together. Love is the, love is the essence that will get us through this. I know these are your essential, essential messages, mm -hmm. but how can we do this in practical terms? Because this I mean, if we only looked solely at the abuse in Hollywood, it's been going on for a very, very long time on all different levels. You only have to look at the two Corries as one example. You know what went on with them. There's so much abuse in Hollywood. It's systemic. Mm -hmm. And as you say, the movements are weaponized. Me too. Black Lives Matter, Antifa, they're weaponized. Mm -hmm. And it's like what the danger is that, for example, you know, saving children will become weaponized. They will see the agenda in it. Mm -hmm. How do we... We, people who genuinely care, how do we find a way through this to help the children who may still be trapped in that system? First, first things first is self-reflection, because if you go down this path, and I, I can attest to this in my own way, fighting the darkness, you will become consumed by it. Mm -hmm. This is a, it is, and it's not because you're a good person that's going to become corrupted. It's because you're going in a destructive direction, unaware of that fact. In fact, many of the people that are part of this destructive system at every step of the way have told themselves that they're not, that they're justified, that they're right because they're right. being rewarded for right. it. So, right. so the ego, that's got to go. And people cannot be followers. You don't need a leader for this. You really don't. Because if you need a leader then you're a believer and your beliefs are limiting. The knowing for yourself is the reflection within. And why I'm telling people to do this is if you want to start making change that is meaningful and productive, coming together in a spirit united, together in love, not just because these bad people over here are doing stuff and we've got to stop them and you will have a for you will be a force of creation rather than destruction. I hear you. And and how people do that is up to them. Because it's like, it's like what I outlined in that, in that video about the path towards healing, and I just pointed at EFT, Matrix Reimprinting, Alice Miller, and a couple of other things. There's so much more out there. 
There's so much more. When you step outside of this illusion of reality and understand this, here's, here's one thing. I just want to give this because so maybe people who are running through their thoughts and trying to figure out a way out, just, just stop for a second. Stop thinking. You are matter in space. And it was like, okay, what does that mean? You took all of this, your body, my body, and compressed it down into a solid state of matter with no space. You would have a size of the thinnest human hair fit on the top of the needle of a pin, on the top of a pin. That's how much matter is in you compressed. So you have 50 trillion cells and 100 trillion atoms in each cell. And that's with a nucleus and electrons, space with energy. This is what the Luciferians know. This is why they do what they do, because they understand vibrational energy, frequency. When Nikola Tesla's talking about the secret to the universe is energy, frequency, and vibration. Right. Don't take that lightly and think it's just science. It's everything. It's our material world. And your consciousness as you express yourself, as you talk to people, as you get, think about what, just for people on a practical level, like think about what this whole time has been about, separation from people. Yes. The cause, the, the effect of mental health and suicide and depression because we're not close to each other. Yeah. We have to get closer to each other. We're meant to be close to each other. We're meant to express ourselves. We're not meant to be beings that are isolated and pulled apart and angry and fearful. It has, it has a psychological, emotional, mental, physical effect on all of us. And these people know that. That's why they're doing it. Right. So, right. so our, our thing is that, look, take their side of the equation and know where they are coming from and do the opposite. And do what ultimately you talk about, how do we get through? You have to do it through feeling. Mm -hmm. This is not a war of thoughts. No, I understand. I completely it's a understand. State of being. It's real. State of being. Real recognizes real. That is the truth, right? You could say yeah. three words, but if people feel your heart, they will get it. I completely understand what you're saying. And I think that is in part what people locked into with you because you were you were almost like stripped back. There was a vulnerability to that video. And again, mm. I felt like you were almost illuminated. I mean, there was just something ethereal coming from you. It's like, you mm. know, and, and, I, and that's why I wonder, and I do hope that you've go, you're going through this healing process. And there yeah. is, a, I, I suspect that you are, and I suspect that your journey involves helping others heal as well in order to heal yourself. You, you just use your gifts and talents. I'm a talker, okay? Right. That's obvious. Right. But- but Very good at use it. that, use that strength and, and focus it, you know, focusing not only on the good that you can do, but focusing your talents. When I, when I, when I talked to people last year on um, one of these other shows, I said, take all of your skills in your job. If you're an, like, if you're a car mechanic, right? You have to do a full diagnostic on that car to determine what the problem is. And you're going to look at it from different angles and what the readings are. And here's like, okay, take all of those skills and turn them on yourself. How you can become a better person. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it's not, if it, you know, try, if it's going a weekend to get a big, you know, Tony Robbins. Yeah, I can do it. If that's what it takes to get you started. Great. Right. But don't stop there because the world changes as you change yeah. your energy frequency and vibration. What you were talking about that illumination. And I, I've, I've looked back at some of the interviews I did like three years ago when I started this. Um, what that is, is it's not an act. No, it becomes, it becomes a, it's a likeness unaware. Of being. It's a state of being that. And, and what that means is this people around you like children respond to that energy. Yes. It's like, if you look at a child who's sad and you go up and you start playing with it, it comes alive. Yes. That's what our natural state is supposed to be. And if we just take that principle of living life as a child of curiosity and wonder and growth and without even thinking it, 
just doing a di- like the discovery of the beauty all around you, yeah. even at times when you forget it. It's so funny to watch you because as I say, I, I, I like studying people, right? That's my thing. And I, so I watched your videos, you know, prior to the, to the recent ones. Mm. You are lit. I mean, I, I know you're the same person, but you're like a different person. And it's amazing because even though in those courage videos, whatever, whether you're talking about whether a film hasn't been re- received as well as you might want it to, for example, you're giving yeah. a lot of guidance yeah. and advice about the film industry and how to navigate your way through it. You're very professional very well put together but there's a heaviness to you which you don't have anymore and the thing is I think what a lot of people they go through this process you know when we like coming through that tunnel and especially when we've come from those industries those media industries where we've been part of the process and we suddenly feel that we're sort of in the world but not of it and that's what I see with you I literally see and I'm I'm so very grateful that you've given us time tonight It's, it's been an absolute no. pleasure talking i think i thank you both you all like these kind of conversations can go outside of shows and that's i think where we need to go next is yes. it's not the take away from the audience but we need to teach people how to how to fish how to nourish themselves yeah. so that they can help nourish others and it's no different than a mother feeding her child she has to nourish herself in order to be able to give milk to that baby so it can grow. So we have to nourish ourselves if we're going to help each other grow and help the children of this world to create a safe world around a new set of laws, a new set of guidances and guidelines, how we want to create our society and live in that world that protects all life from the environment to our own human being, our own human family. And What you guys, you and Sean and others have done, I mean, you guys have been out there on the front lines for years, you know, in in the lone voice in the wilderness Mm. in some cases, right? Mm, Yeah. And look at where we are today and where we could be tomorrow. Absolutely, my friend. That's where that's where we gotta look at is like look at look at the progress of all that has been made in such a short period of time. These discussions, they're long form discussions, we're having deeper discussions because people are so hungry for them. And they're seeking them out. And I just see that as a great responsibility as well as an opportunity to open up the dialogue even further. And uh, I just appreciate what you and many others um, have been doing for a very long time with sacrifices, you know, as they've censored you, as they've tried to demonetize, as they've, as they've made threats. I mean, all of it, and you take it in stride and you just say, you know what, I'm going to keep going because this is what I know. Remember those bricks that they throw at you, use them to build your home. That's what you do. And, and that's the <laughs> yes. way it works, yo. That, you, that is literally the way it works. And it empowers you. It literally yeah. empowers you because there comes a point when they just can't keep removing you from whatever, from TV or radio. And then suddenly the universe steps in and creates something completely different. I was getting com- constantly removed from TV and suddenly we get this offer from brand new tube to do a live stream and it's yeah. taking off. It's got a life of it its own people have become very much a part of it and it's like mainstream you can't stop us you can't stop us with this this has a life an organic life that is growing way Mm -hmm. beyond you and that is what happens i truly believe that once you make that commitment in your heart that you want that you're going to make errors but you want to move forward to be a lightness of being you want to bring light rather than dark into the world i it is my experience that the universe rallies around and assists you in that yes yes the live stream is lit up right now like i've never seen like Last time I saw it like this, was when I was talking to David Icke, and I <laughs> interview a lot of people, and I am absolutely mesmerized by you. My heart rate has gone up. I can, f- the energy yeah. has raised the hair on my arms. I'm really feeling it. Do you have time to answer two more questions? Yeah, yeah. I'll be All short right. in my answers too. <laughs> okay, first one is. You said that when you were in the hospital, you didn't understand that you'd been abused. Right. What led to the realization that you had been abused and how did you comprehend that and deal with it? Mm. Um, I knew that there was, you know, my childhood, the things that I mentioned earlier, but it wasn't, I had my first inkling at it when I started having to have surgery on uh, my lower ends of my body. Um, 
when I was about 20, 21, I would bleed and had to go in and get surgery for that. I didn't understand what that was, but moving out to LA, um, I attached myself to a friend of mine. I say attached because I could sense there was truth and I was willing to, to as much as I fought it and resisted hearing the truth, I, I took it. And this person was the first one to tell me, uh, you know, your mom and dad are not, you know, there's a version of that story that you have that's true, but there's also this other thing, which there's like telltale signs and made me aware of them. And um, there was a lot of crying, uh, a lot of anger, a lot of fear, a lot of terror, a lot of mistakes, a lot of suffering. I mean, statistically, not just because of what I told you earlier, but everything else I've done in my life, and I'm not a you know, bad person in terms of like wanting to hurt anybody, but I made a lot of stupid mistakes and I found myself in stupid relationships that I had no business being in and thinking I could change them or thinking that I could make them worship me. I mean, it's just, it's horrible stuff. It's horrible stuff when this happens to you and you make excuses for it. So what happened was it was a confluence of whole, whole things is seeking out truthful information, reading Alice Miller's drama, The Gifted Child gave so much clarity. I mean, I remember one day I was, I mean, I had been crying and, and reading this and having, you know, going to bed and waking up the next day with more revelations. Um, but it's a process, it's, it's layers, it's walls coming down. And, and, and it's not so much about the psychoanalytical side of it is like, okay, what is true? What is real? And, and that was the hardest thing for me is I didn't have a sense of what was real and what is true. Even in myself, I was a, I was a mannequin. I was an imitation of an imitation. I was never, there was moments of authentic feeling, but there were really a lot of pseudo feeling and being very clever and, and, and thinking I was not that I was better than people, but that I was smarter and I could outwit them like I had when I was a kid. Mm -hmm. So the real way to, that I saw all this was looking back on it and having someone tell me the truth that opened up my, my life and allowed me to be able to see reality for the first time. You're still unpacking a lot of it, aren't you? I get a sense that there's, there's stuff that you're still coming to terms there with. There is. I mean, it, it started with, uh, you know, my father passed away this past year. and um, I'm sorry to hear that. You know, thank you. Um, I didn't really know him. But still, he's your father. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, he's my father. But I want to tell you, like, whatever occurred in the last year, um, those walls came down and prepared me for to go see him at Christmas time. And I spent five days with my dad. And they were the best five days I've ever spent with him. And he was, you know, you can't imagine the kind of life that he lived, but what, what happened was, is that I stopped, I took the advice of one of my friends years ago. He said, stop trying to make him give you that fatherly love for which he never did then. Just deal with him in the present, if you want to, in the now, and see him for who he is. And when I did that, another person came out. And I saw that he had a child in him too. Yes. That was silent. Key moment. That is a key turning point for many people. And, 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 it, and it shocks you when you see it because it, it's, it's not going to be like the dominant one there. But when you open that space up and you just listen and you give what you wish to give, not trying to manipulate to get daddy to love me, right. but just give him the grace of whatever you want to. I remember being in the restaurant, he ordered a, um, wanted a brisket. He said, you really need to try that. They were short on it. I said, give it to him. And we're sitting down eating and all of a sudden out of nowhere, he just takes it and puts it on my plate, just picks it up with his fingers and puts it on my plate. Why and how and this and that and the other, when I saw him dying two weeks later in hospice, I saw that little boy again, terrified. Mm -hmm. And he was still trying to hold on and be tough and strong and not show his worry. But I'll tell you this, I, that whole experience, I cannot describe it in one setting, but what happened was he was in a coma 
just breathing out of his mouth, had no movement, nothing, no response. And um, I ended up sitting in front of him and I said a prayer and I told quietly in my heart, I said, dad, if you want to go, go. And within three minutes, he was in the act of dying and he opened his eyes and looked right at me mm. with total clarity. And his eyes were as clear as day. And, um, you know, I, I, I don't know how to describe it other than the fact that I was able to give him what he never had as a child, but deserved right. in spite of all of what he had done to himself, to his family, to me, I'm not excusing any of it. No, but I, but I just, I focused on what I could do to help him to give him the best comfort at the end of his life and, and, and make sure that he died, whatever you want to call it, dignity, just knowing that he was cared for and loved and not alone. Mm-hmm because that's where he started. Mm -hmm. He started from a lack of love and being alone mm -hmm. and being abused, which is why he, this man who was educated at a high end level was an entrepreneur who created an, a company that is worth over $20 million in annual revenue a year today and died with less than $10,000 in his oh, wow. bank account. Wow, because lack, in any area of our life, it impacts on other areas of our life as well. And what you've actually done is, is some generational healing there because what you saw in your father was this small child who was vulnerable and yeah. who had not been able to be there for you in the way that you needed. And actually, what you're, by the very act of what you're doing right now, is you're almost healing some of your ancestry. Because there's going to yes. be a, a whole trail of people who were not protected. And come up to the point when we get you, who, for whatever reason, you're more equipped than anybody before you in your family line, it would That's appear, right. to be able to rectify this situation. That's phenomenal. That's like an yeah. honor in some respects that you've been yeah. bestowed that, but I know it's painful. I it understand. is very, it is, I, you know, look, I don't, I don't tell anybody what they have to do. They should seek out their own knowledge and do what they feel is best for them. But I, I can tell you this, when you get to that, that level, um, and it's not me, I'm not talking about my level. I'm talking about that level where you can see that your suffering is your father's and your father's is yours. Yes. And you don't have hatred in your heart towards him. Yeah when I had every reason to, and I had every reason to not want to be there for him and not take care of him. And yet I still did not because I was obligated or felt guilty or shamed and all that, but I could recognize the child that was hurt, that longed for it. And yet at yeah. the same time, be the compassionate, loving being that's unconditional for him at the same time. And what you said earlier is, is still, am I still healing? Oh yeah, I am. Mm. Oh yeah. There's not, there's not a, there's not a, this isn't about, an arrival or a destination. Absolutely. This has more to do with a life process of learning and reflecting and seeing all of the illusions that we do to ourselves, which create this reality collectively. That's why we're in this time. And, and all I tell people is like, if it seems hard and impossible and sounds scary, yes, it can be. But I will say this, you who have suffered trauma in your life, survived it. You're a survivor, not a victim. And if you were a child who was abused at an early age, you survived when you were at the most vulnerable and defenseless time of your life. And you're still here now. And it can't kill you. It can't destroy you. Only you can destroy you or only you can heal you. And so what I, what I did four years ago, I decided I didn't want to live this way anymore. I had no idea, Sonia, how I was going to get there. And I just said, I don't want to live this way anymore. I planted my foot down. I turned and pivoted. And I said, I'm going to stumble forward in this direction now. Magnificent. And, it, and four years later, I'm here and I'm, I've got more work to do. I've definitely got more work to do. And, I'm, and I, I don't use that term when people start talking about enlightenment and all that. No. Human experience is the honest expression of where you are at that moment. And it's having awareness mm. of yourself yeah. that gives you the greatest protection 
against all of those deceptions that you've lived under for such a long time, both external and internal. Absolutely. Because that contradiction, those contradictions, that cognitive dissonance starts when you're a child. When, when you're a little boy or a little girl and these two people who are supposed to love you hurt you, you can't conceive of that. And so you have to put it away somewhere and you have to keep going. They know they love me. They always cared for me. And the truth of the matter is this. If you didn't have parents that were willing to die for you, to sacrifice their lives, you have an uphill climb just as when you see it in a person like a woman, and I'm not a targeting women here. I just want to be very clear. When you have women who are messaged to, to support feminism in the abortion world. And, and I ask people to look at it this way. What creates somebody who has that view of killing a child as a right, as, as a, a sanctioned right for them to do? I ask people, I said, imagine the kind of parents that that woman may have had. And the fact that they, she can, how can she see the beauty and the preciousness of the life that is growing inside of her when she herself was not beautiful and precious to the very two people that were supposed to love her? How you create a sexist, misogynist, rapist is not because of men and masculinity. It has to do with the fact that what kind of relationship that young boy when he was a child had with his mother. Was it a loving relationship that allowed him to make a choice to go over here and do such a heinous and horrific act? Or was it something, it was something else. I'm, I'm saying we're at a time where we have the knowledge and the capacity yes. to start healing the world Absolutely. and get us out of this time where we're treating symptoms and allowing industry to come in and dictate to us what's going to be cured and what isn't. Yeah. Absolutely. We, so here's Absolutely. my final, here's my final question then. Yep. Do you sink and bond easier with people who have been through trauma? Ooh, what a question. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, trauma bonding. I would, I'm using that term yes. uh, is easier to identify with, but it's not, um, I don't recommend, I, I try to be, I try to be less about engaging and more about giving um, so that I don't, so that I don't find myself uh, in a situation where in the past I would sink down with them. Right. And that the basis of the relationship is all about trauma. In fact, um, what I try to make a conscious effort to do is to just give a little bit and give them a break rather than to, to engage them fully and say, let's talk about it and let's have it out. Because let me tell you this, this is the scary part about this whole thing. Um, what's inside of here can't be seen. And, but it can be known by the fruits of someone's labor or mm -hmm. the fruits that they bear, the, the, the actions of that individual. And so even though you may have a certain understanding about trauma, it's, it's one to the next, to the next, to the next, one lived experience to the next, to the next, to the next. And maybe they all have like these labels that would say child sexual abuse or beating or the, the expression of it is unique to the individual. Mm -hmm. And so I just believe that if you're going to be involved with someone, be as honest with each other as possible. And if you see that person who says, you know what, I don't want to talk about this anymore. Don't push the issue, move away leave them alone, let them go be. You did your part and you moved on. And the next speaker that comes in, you're another connect, you're another node and a connector on that point. And you did your part to set up the next speaker. Wow. <laughs> Thank you for being so generous with your time. I've never I felt such energy in that. the Zoom before. Yeah. And please so let everybody know how they could contact you and, and support you on your socials. Mm -hmm. So uh, no restrictions is our uh, Twitter handle and uh instagram so no restrictions and if you want to know more about our work go to no restrictions ent.com you can rent the the film a child's voice on vimeo you can own it um and and all of our other films are on there as well on vimeo as well as amazon the ones that haven't been uh removed hmm. but uh you can also contact us through the website and we want to hear from you i i'm you know whatever i can do I, i'm 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 focused right now on doing a film called Game Day. It's a pre-production I'm in, but um, 
you know, your messages, whatever support, whatever you want to give. It's, it's really about, you know, taking and sharing things. And uh, if you enjoy our films and it inspires you, share it with somebody. Share it with someone else. Um, share this interview. Share whatever it is that you feel is going to help advance this story that we're trying to get ourselves out of and create a new one and a new future into. Thank you so much for your time, your open heartedness. Well, the absolute generosity with your time. That is so much appreciated. No. It was just one of those things where I don't think any of us just wanted to let it go. It was like, this, is, no. this feels like something very real is Thank happening you. here. So listen, you take too. good care of yourself. You I hope that your healing continues apace. It sounds like it is you know you and uh, and again thank you so much for being prepared to step on certainly at this point when everybody wants a piece of you <laughs> and uh, and share and share yourself the way yeah. you have and have a, a wonderful rest of the weekend as well all right thank you all light up the world with love absolutely That's what we gotta do hallelujah yeah. take thank care you, Paul. Yeah. take care bye thank you guys have a good thank night you. thank you and as for you, Sonia, you shouldn't even be here right now. It's your birthday. That's why I gave you the opportunity to bail earlier on. You can't bail. That's not the way this works. That is not the way this works. Well, you better bail now before I start taking calls, because God knows how long that's going to last. Are you planning to take calls now? I promised the people that this is going to be the first time. Um, we're going to do it tonight. So I'm, I'm pledged to that. I've sworn to that. I'm going to do it. Right. I, Don't I stick around. It's your birthday. I'm you going. Join the calls next week. Absolutely. Listen, <laughs> no, no. Saeed saying it's got to be done next week. Really? Yeah. Are you sure, is, has that come from the top, Saeed? Yes, it, it has. I don't want to be on a, on a, on a, yes. <laughs> that's coming to talk. okay. <laughs> listen, listen, let, let's say, listen, we'll definitely get these calls done next week. But first of all, I would like to say thank you to all of our guests. Oh Unfortunately, sorry for Alison, the connection there wasn't great, but, but still we managed to get that, that over. Thank you to Darren Layton. Thank you to Norman Baker. Thank you to Nicola Robinson. Thank you to John Paul Rice. Thank you, of course, to the big men behind us, the great team. Thank you to the whole team that keeps this moving. Thank you to you for giving us this motivation, this love, this heart to keep us going, the suggestions, everything. I want to say cheers to all of you. I am now <laughs> going to have a drink. I'm going to take the next two days off. I love you all. I'm so grateful for the energy that you're feeding us with. It's pure beautifulness, isn't it, Sean? <laughs> it absolutely. It really is. Anything else you want to say, my friend? I would just like to thank everybody. Uh, the energy in the live stream was amazing. I'm still, I've got energy from crazy energy inside me right now. I'm just like absolutely buzzing from Jean Paul. I've never, honestly, I would love to get him back on. And I think from what people were saying in the live stream, that was really impacting people's lives, maybe even saving people's lives, hearing him speak like that. I so that's, that's why it was so important to, uh, yeah, to keep absolutely. it going. Which is why I wasn't going to bugger off. Listen, we're, we're, we're a team. We're in this together, right? And the point is, is that actually, and uh, so the, the gang in the background was saying to me, isn't this a wonderful birthday though? Because you, you know, you're talking about these really, really important things. And actually, yes. I'm honored, really, really, truly honored. So I wasn't going to bugger off and leave you because I was as gripped and in, uh, engaged as you were. We're, we're incredibly blessed, Sean. We're, we're yeah. blessed with the support we're receiving. We're blessed with the guests who want to come on and talk to us. And we are blessed absolutely with the su support we're receiving from the audience. And I, I don't think there's much more that I could ask for for my birthday right now. Thank you. So... Thanks for all the positive comments, the subscribers, yep. the live chat, the donations. Thank and you we so will much. be back next Saturday, commencing at 6 p.m. UK. Have a brilliant week. Take care. Cheers. Bye. Bye.